word of God we find ourselves in 1 Corinthians in the 15th chapter briefly this chapter Paul was teaching about the resurrection of the dead after Paul's departure from the church in Corinth and many teachers came they told that what Paul had told them before was not true so he kept coming to this topic he kept explaining himself kept convincing them because man does not easily understand that's why this 15th chapter Paul emphasizes resurrection you realize that he had spent time talking to them he had talked about the holy communion he had talked about the gifts of the spirit and the operation how they needed the gift of love how the other gifts were to operate he even taught about the order of services in the congregation I want to remind you that the church today is a result of Paul's work because in the times of Peter in the church in Jerusalem order or let's say their faith had three things this is what they only talked about the first they talked about how Jesus came on earth the second they talked about his death and resurrection the third they talked about his return those were the only teachings they had in the primitive church Peter would move forward and talk about how they walked with the Lord the next day John would give his experience they called those the teachings of the apostles each one talked about the experience they had how they ate together how they had time with him that was the service now because their services were meant to be short and they were always repeating the same stories they would take time to share bread they would fellowship together it, it was a wonderful atmosphere they would eat and call Thomas and say give us your experience Thomas, and Thomas would give his personal experience he would, he would say as I lived with the Lord I wanted to see with my eyes and someone else would say I had the same experience if they said that Peter, Peter would rise and heal a sick person and fear would take them they couldn't believe what was happening so the number grew they had no other message now when Paul came he realized the church was meant to grow up the church has people people have issues how will the issues be resolved people have joy how will they rejoice in the Lord people have hope how do we strengthen them in the hope that's why he wrote the epistles so he started instituting order in the church the first book of Corinthians Paul shows them how the church is shows them that the church is not heaven shows them that when you receive Jesus it doesn't make you an angel you receive Jesus but remain human but he shows them that the closer you get to the Lord the more your flesh dies which leads us to the book of Ephesians in the book of Corinthians he talks 
about Christians who are carnal. Iki tabo chawa yefeso arere kanu mu Kristo wamba yekostime ya kera kambara kostime cha. Changwe se umunu wakera wapuye hakazumunu musha. And in the book of Ephesians he talks about how the carnal Christian becomes a spiritual Christian is transformed. Igitabo cha Filipi nabo arabakomeza babwira ngo muhumure nubwibazo bibaho ndi bikura ubu Kristo umuntu akomeza no mu Kristo. In the book of Philippians he tells them be strong because if any problems come you will always remain a believer. Igitabo cha Abakolosayi pora arabereka uko imitima yabo itagomba gutinda kwisa ahubwo ireba mu ijuru uko bzaba bimeze kose nubwo turi kwisi ariko imitima irebe hejuru. For the book of Colossians he tells them focus on what is about focus on the Lord yes we're on earth but focus on heavenly things Igitabo cyaba Galatia For the book of Galatians Pura arabwira ukuntu umuntu yatangiye mu mwuka atagomba kurangiza mu mubiri none wakabereka ko tugomba kuva ku mategeko tukareba ibyo umwuka ntitugwe buri munsi For the book of Galatians Paul shows them how yes you may begin in the spirit but work hard to maintain your spiritual state not always backsliding. Igitabo chambere cha Thessalonike ni cha kabiri. For the first and second books of Thessalonians Paul arabereka ko mu Kristo atari umuntu wiceye gusa ngo Yesu azaza agomba kugira icyo akora kwisi. Paul shows them that Christians are not dormant people waiting for the return of the Lord but they have to do something. He says those who do not work should not eat. Aba Thessalonike barice ngo ni duhinga ni turya Yesu araje umwaka urakiriwa kabiri nzarira bakubita hanyuma arababwira ati mwarabeshwe bwebwe. Do you know what happened to the Thessalonians? They sat and just waited for the return of the Lord and no one was working so they started facing it rough and Paul wrote to them and says you have been beguiled. Igitabo cha Roma Paul ravuga umwuka na mategeko. Now for the book of Romans Paul talks about the law and the spirit. Niba ushima kugendera mu mwuka If you choose to walk in the spirit You will receive the grace Those in Christ Jesus have been set free from the law And he shows them how a Christian is helped by the spirit more than the law Now for the book of Philemon For the book of Philemon he talks about how masters and slaves in Christ are one. He was talking about masters and slaves or bosses and their servants. Yes, when you find yourself in the Lord you are one. Now as we're talking about the books of Corinthians We're talking about the life of the church. The church has been redeemed by Christ but people have different cultures and customs. So these people have to be trained, taught, mentored and learn how to take on what God is showing them. So Paul tries to show them what they need to understand in regard to the order of the church. Because the church is different from other secular associations. Yes, people in the church are part of the society but there is another order in the church. Paul shows them that you don't just come to the church and say whatever pleases you there are fundamental teachings that you have to follow We have to follow the scriptures and there are things that God had inspired him that he taught them and things that those who had walked with the Lord had seen So whenever Paul would leave other teachers would come and teach them contrary to what he had taught them And people are easily convinced and people have a habit of following those who mislead them than those who rebuke them Paul took time to write the book of Corinthians 
that he may correct them and reprimand them and show them the right way. But also show them that people are not angels simply because they're in the church. They are on a journey. There are babies in the Lord. And there are those who are toddlers. There are adults. There are different levels of maturity just as it happens in our physical bodies so it does in the spirit. What you tell a baby is not what you tell a teenager and it's not what you tell an adult. So Paul took his time to show this. For the 15th chapter therefore he talks about resurrection. Paul talks about resurrection. Paul talks about resurrection. Because there are people who came to them and told them that what Paul had taught about resurrection was a lie. Yego, muri philosophy Greek, changu se mubagiriki, ba mwe mera abani ni babzemere. Yes, in Greek philosophy, some believed in resurrection and others didn't. Na bani mwe mera gakuzu, kari kubavuka kumu na komeza kubaho. They did not specifically believe in resurrection, but they believed in the afterlife. Gufa kubuzima ko bugwe umunadafa immortalite de lame kubuzima gumu nubu komeza kwa immortel ndi bupfa ba mwe mubagiriki ba babzemere aga abakuri kera aga. Those who followed the line of thought of Socrates believed that there was immortality of the soul, but they didn't specifically believe in the resurrection. Philosophy so for Paul to come and teach these Gentiles about the resurrection of the dead, they couldn't easily believe it, so they told them, you are fooled, this is not true. This this greatly offended Paul because the central part of his message and the gospel that he taught was based on the resurrection of the dead. Even all the epistles that Paul wrote, it was all about resurrection. This is the message that Paul had. Paul believed in Jesus because he knew Jesus lived but he lived as a human being and they killed him. He never believed that he was. When they met on the way to Damascus Paul so Paul having met Jesus on the way to Damascus and Jesus told him I am alive and I'm the man you persecute it changed the whole mindset of Paul in the way that all that he taught was based on the resurrection of Jesus and Jesus spoke to him in Hebrew when Jesus met Paul he didn't call him and say Paul Paul why do you persecute me he called him according to his Hebrew name and said Saul Saul knowing the roots of Saul as a man from the house of Benjamin and this amazed him if Jesus lived he died and rose our people are perishing this offended him this hurt him. that's why he wrote the 10th and 11th chapters of the book of Romans because he was amazed that the Jewish people didn't understand that Jesus rose from the dead if this is true war unto us let me go and teach them the resurrection that was the central part of his message. 
They tell him that other teachers came and told them that there is no resurrection of the dead and Paul wrote this chapter. If you may read the 15th chapter with me. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Ngobene data ku murongo wa mbere ndabamenyesha ubutumwa bwiza nababwirije ubwo mwakiriye mukabukomereramo kandi mugakizwa nabwo niba mubukomeza kuko nabo babwirije keretse mwaba mwizereye ubusa Moreover brethren I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you which also you received and in which you stand by which also you are saved if you hold fast that word which I preached to you unless you believed in vain Brethren the gospel I brought to you the first time I came to you you should be standing in it and I thank God that you're still standing in it and you have carried on with it I preach to you so if the message I preached to you, you and you stood in it and you confessed it then, then others have preached to you otherwise and you believed them you believed in vain verse 3 akazuka kumunsi wa gatatu kuko byari byarandiswe nanone akabonekera kefa maze akabonekera bo 12 hanyuma akabonekera bene data basaga 500 muri abo benshi baracariho nubu ariko bamwe barasinziriye yongeye kubonekera yakobo abonekera n'izindi ntumwa zose kandi nyuma ya bose nanje arambonekera ni nk'umwana w'ikenda nuko kuko noroheje hanyuma yizindi ntumwa zose ndetse ntibinkwiriye ko nitwa intumwa kuko narenganya gitorero ryima ariko ubuntu bw'Imana nibwo bwatumye mba ukondi kandi umuntu bwayo nahawe ntibwaha ntibwa baye ubwo busa ahubwo nakoze imirimo myinshi iruta iya bose abo nibande abamubangirije ababanye na Yesu abamubonye azuka nyamara singe ahubwo nubuntu bw'Imana buri kumwe nange nuko rero arinje cyangwa bo ibyo nibyo tubabwiriza namwe ibyo nibyo mwizeye gupfa no kuzuka for i delivered to you first of all that which i also received that christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures and that he was seen by kephas then by the 12 after that he was seen by over 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part remain to the present but some have fallen asleep after that he was seen by james then by all the apostles then last of all he was seen by me also as by one born out of due time for i am the least of the apostles who am not worthy to be called an apostle because i persecuted the church of god but by the grace of god i am what i am and his grace toward me was not in vain but i labored more abundantly than they all yet not i but the grace of god which was with me therefore whether it was i or they so we preach and so you believed Hallelujah. What is Paul saying? He says, You know well that I gave you what I received. I had men like Peter James that Jesus came, died and rose. I told you what I received. Because we all talked about the resurrection. Another thing I told you. Christ died for our sins. Evangelicals basically. Evangelical believers. This is their main verse. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. 
that Jesus died for us and rose. Now the evangelical message the gospel is this on verse 3 and 4 that he died for our sins and rose that's it. another thing this is why we are different from other religions other religions have eloquent people many years before Jesus came there is a wonderful man who lived in China called Confucius he helped organize the Chinese society he was well mannered he was eloquent he was wise to assist the people in the society but what Confucius didn't do he didn't redeem the Chinese even many years before Jesus came in India there is a man called Buddha who lived there Buddha did exceptional things he was intelligent he would speak he led the society and people lived in peace but Buddha did exceptional and all these men rose when their societies were falling morally. He would come or they would come to restore them. Same applies to Buddha, but he never redeemed them. In Greece, before Jesus came, there was Socrates. Socrates This was a man of values and he taught people the truth many Greeks followed him but Socrates never died for the Greeks but this is our difference from those what I received is what I gave you Jesus Christ died for the sinners he died for our sins including the Indians including the Chinese including the Iranians including Africans even those who call themselves workers those who call themselves wise men no one died but ours he was wise like the world he was well mannered like the world he was a prophet like the world but more he found people about to perish and chose to die instead of them. This is the message Paul gave. This is the message the church is building. A man from another land and loved greatly other people. He was meant to love the Indians if he was Indian. Confucius was meant to love the Chinese because he was Chinese. But Jesus loved man, yet he was divine. This is the message of power. This is the message of miracle. Man came from another land and found they were about to throw you in the pit of death and said, no, I will fall in their place what I received is what I gave you Jesus died for our sins hallelujah, hallelujah. this is why Jesus is greater than all the other prophets he saved you when he didn't know you or you didn't know him he didn't pay for your redemption with money but by his life what would we give him let's give him a mighty hand clap hallelujah 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 amen 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 but I'm going to give some up here I'm going to give you a gift I'm going to give you he says what I tell you it's according to the scriptures he 
rero ahageze arabikora murumva ibyamuvuzweho nibyo byakoze donc ni fact ni bigaragaza Corinthians what i tell you you're using your logic to understand but the witness i have is the scriptures they had written about him and he came and fulfilled what was written ngwagahambwa kazuka ku munsi wa gatatu nguko byari byarandise and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture it had been written that he would die and he would rise as it was written the manuscript for this the man who lived with for long. Isaiah. His name is Isaiah. 600 years ago he had None said it. Namwe. And I speak to you Corinthians. In 3560 AD. 650 years have passed. I'm not making it up. It was written. I give you what I receive. Basically the death and the resurrection of Jesus had been written. How undi we se muhanuzi wabanje kuvuga kwa zaza. Bari tokeje bonyine avuga kwa ari umuhanuzi ariko we bari baramuvuze. All other prophets nothing had been written about their coming. They just woke up and one morning declared themselves prophets but Jesus had been written about before. Dere uri mu nzira yukuri. I I will choose to say this to you that you are in the right way. Because the man you believe in was written about before and it was fulfilled. The man you have believed in is greater in love. Greater in love than others. Especially that. Yachunguye gupfa kwawe wowe nabana bawe nabuzukuru karande yose izadukurikirana yarangije gukuriha igiciro cha He paid the price for you and all your descendants Abandi bose Everyone else Nugize ngo ari igiciro akicura akicira muri generation yabo indi kurikira ntagira icyakora ariko Yesu we no mu mzaro zizakurikira All the others who attempt to pay the price they just do it for that generation but Jesus has done it for all generations. It was written that he would rise. No no Now witnessing this verse 5 He was seen by Cephas. And then the 12. The word 12. Bwari uburyo bwo kuvuga bari mu nubwo Yuda tararimo. Bavuga ga 12 kugira ngo wamubarukome zubebe. The, it was a way of saying the people who originally saw him though Judas wasn't part of them but they kept it 12 let me say that, if you are against this Peter is the lie he saw him with his eyes if you're still against this we'll bring the 12 even Matthias they'll come and tell you that they saw him did you see him die Actually I didn't see it I read. Did you see him rise? I went to his tomb. How did you meet him? He found me in Galilee yes, when I was fishing. Paul is giving facts. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mwibuke ko ari mabwira abantu bo mu giheke kandi ba Petero bacyariho. He was speaking to people of his generation and Peter was still alive. Hey. Mwabakorindo mbabwire ngo Yesu arazutse ni 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 bucya hazi nzererezi zibabeshe ngo ndi yazutse ba Petero bahari mwabaye gute mwabakorindo Corinthians I tell you about the resurrection of Jesus Christ and you choose not to believe it yet I have given you facts and witnesses people like Peter how and who has fooled you Corinthians Verse 6 Ngo hanyuma ngo akabonekera bene data basaga magana tano murabo benshi baracyariho nubu ariko bamwe barasinziriye After that he was seen by over 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part remain to the present but some have fallen asleep Aravuga ko bamwe bakiriho abandi bapfuye Some are still alive and some have died Amakuru atangwa nabantu Now stories given by people Avuga ko ku musozi Tabora tradition Tradition says that on Mount Tabor hari hateranye abantu magana tano There was a gathering of 500 people. Igihe Yesu yazukaga. When Jesus rose. Aya namakuru abantu bavuze bo muri Israel. Tradition in Israel says. Paul talks about. Hariho bamwe bariho. 
Because some were alive. They say that when they were on Mount Tabor, Jesus appeared to but them. And they couldn't believe it. Paul said, Among the five hundred, some are still alive. And others are falling asleep. They can be witnesses. They were on the same mountain. And Jesus appeared to them. Some people He's giving words to convince them and giving witnesses facts to convince them. There is nothing there is nothing sad as seeing Paul and the people he had built, the church he had built, turn him into a liar. That's why he writes this chapter that they may get it that he did not lie to them 500 and the 12 he appeared to Kef the 12 then 500 they are still alive though others have fallen asleep verse 7 after that, he was seen by James, then by all the apostles. <laughs> Do you know this James? His own brother. It's not James the uh -uh. disciple. Oh, yeah. No. It's James, his brother. You find James in Galatians 119. James was a brother of Jesus. If you may go to Galatians 119. It is believed that James was the brother of Jesus. He appeared to James his brother. This is where James got saved. And then became the pastor of the church in Jerusalem. Jesus appeared to him. As I'm still with you. You never believed that I was God. Because I was your brother on your mother's side. But James, behold I'm risen. And James could not believe this. And he knelt down before him. Join the apostles and serve me. James, the brother of our Lord, was the pastor of the church in Jerusalem. Yes, I But do you know? Normally, we Paul uses the example of James because he knows that in families some people are not easily convinced so he says go to ask James his brother saw him and all the other apostles but above all after all of those he appeared to me by one born out of due time what is it's as if I was born out of duty. Late. Children born out of due time are children who are born when the family is not planning or intending to have another child. When no one actually is still giving birth in the family, this child shows up. It has, it's concluded that the mother will never give birth anymore. Children born out of due time. People like us. I was born when my father was elderly. They thought it was finished. The young man who carried the bag of my father he was, called, he was a prophet called Kalikov but he died when he got saved his family because when my father got saved his whole family rejected him this young man too when he got saved 
His father hit him with a machete to kill him. But he didn't hit the neck. But it cut his mouth. When he bled, his father left him for dead. My father went to carry him and brought him to our house. And he grew up in our household. His family thought he was dead. Whenever my father would go to preach in different mountains, this young man would help my father with his bag. So in that time in 1969 when they were climbing a mountain a very high mountain they were tired and they chose to sit. When they sat Karikov was full of the spirit and he told my father God has said that you give birth to a child. Your last born will be a son. They had forgotten about having babies. Call him Paul. And he will work as Paul did in the Bible. This is how I was born. I'm not telling you the whole prophecy. People born when there is no plan and it seems like the woman has begun her menopause. That's how they called me Paul. It's not a name I cooked up somewhere. My father wrote it in his journal and he kept the prophecy. Then, when we were here, Karikov came to our house with my father and they showed me where they had written in that journal they wrote it in 1969 children born out of due time should be paid attention to that's what Paul says even me finally he appeared to me as one born out of due time. And they, they believed the number of the apostles was 12. No other apostle would show up and I, Paul, showed up. Do you understand? understand? He says even I Born out of due time When it was finished He appeared to me But because he had told this to them before And they were not convinced He had to give other facts And other people as witnesses for I am the least for I am the least of the apostles who am I not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God Paul says he revealed himself to me when when I was persecuting the church because I believed Jesus never was on the way to persecute the church people who believed that Jesus had risen that's when he came to me so I shouldn't even be called an apostle for this reason why I persecuted men but because of the grace of God the grace of God I am what I am and his grace toward me was not in vain but I labored more abundantly than they all. Peter is stuck in Jerusalem. I am in Corinth. I was born yesterday. But I have shaken Asia with the gospel. I've hit Europe. And I want to go to Spain. Actually, Paul intended to go to Egypt. 
in Alexandria but njewe, he says I the one born out of due time who persecuted the church once I saw him I chose to take this gospel I went proclaiming that there is a man who died and rose who died for our sins and then he rose I labored abundantly more than they Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 There are people God keeps for his people. When they rise. When they reach there. Those who came before become the last and the last become the first. They labor abundantly. Do you know what was happening in Jerusalem? Peter was there and everyone else. All the apostles. Paul. Paul said no. Paul says I am educated. I had never seen anyone die for the sins of Paul. people, but I, Paul, was there and everyone else. So Paul says, I had never seen anyone die for the sins of men. I grew up knowing that people pay sacrifices. No one even gave his son to redeem them. But now I have discovered Christ. Why should I stay in my comfort zone in Jerusalem? I would rather go. What? And how? How can someone die for people because of love? And we choose to stay in Jerusalem. No. I will proclaim this. That's what he called the good news. I have good news. Someone died for sinners. Someone rose. Do you know what happened to the apostles? Because they stayed one morning. There were three powerful men. There was John, James, and Peter. These hindered everyone else from leaving. And God allowed the beheading of James. Peter, you have resurrected people. Now resurrect James. In the name of Jesus, James, be gathered once more. There is a death that comes from God. And you cannot stop it by prayer. They buried James. Unbelievable. Do you know who James is? The one they killed in the second chapter. In the tenth chapter. He had visited Dorcas. In the twelfth chapter. He could not resurrect James. God was teaching a lesson. And shortly. Peter said wait. They took him. We will kill you. What are you doing in Jerusalem? Go and proclaim what you have seen. Because the world does not rise and end no. in Jerusalem. No. Jerusalem. The whole world is not defended in Jerusalem. The gospel take it. Things happen and Christians were confused. They began with who? Stephen. With Stephen. Mm. What is happening? Some rebuked demons of death, but it had nothing to do with demons. Because the death of James and the death of Stephen caused Christians who were afraid to flee and they fled. People in Samaria got saved. Beyond Judea they got saved. Uh, so Jesus is saying, why do you need me to kill you for you to spread the gospel? When Paul got saved, he said, I will not fight with them in Jerusalem. I have seen him. 
And the people were with together every time we only repeat the same story same message. So he purposed. He purposed to spread the gospel where no one else had spread it. What is the good news? He died for our sins. And he rose. That was the message. No. There are things that happen and some confuse it with demons or other spirits or confusion, but it's not that. God is tired of people staying in the comfort zone and eating bread. The good news. The good news. Aravugango, harubutuma tuwa babgirish. Kani mize, kumunongwa chuminu. Verse 11, he says, Therefore, we have taught and you have believed it. Ngari ze, ibutuma tuwa babgirish. You believed what we preached. Igita angaje, poro no murongwa chumina kabi. Now, amazing is verse 12. Weiko. Now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead How do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Because there are people who rose in Corinth And say that Paul has misled you No one is raised Christ from the dead How could Christ rise from the dead? And the church was confused. People couldn't believe this. So is this the truth? This is what Paul writes. Verse 13. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. Because they were telling people. They came when people were mourning, for example. They would come and say, Behold, your relative is dead and we'll never meet them. It's finished. And the Christians in Corinth were so wounded. And the Christians in Corinth now others would come and say Jesus died and he rose again so be strong your relative will rise then others would say who told you that there is resurrection of the, the dead it will never happen then the church was confused <laughs> The reason why the message of the resurrection is heavy it is because it creates hope in you, hope in eternity. So when someone dies and you tell them that their loved one will meet them again, it creates another kind of hope, and that's the true message. Let's rush. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Listen. The reason why we proclaim the gospel boldly it is because we believe that Christ died and rose again. If Christ died and didn't rise from the dead, it's all empty, it's nothing. And what we're telling you is just pure lies. The the key of our message is the resurrection. If there is no resurrection, there is no good news. Now, 
kuko twayihamije yuko yazuye Kristo uwo itazuye niba abapfuye batazuka Yes and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he did not rise up if in fact the dead do not rise if the dead do not rise then Christ is not risen En fait abantu bakera people of the ancient times cyangwa nkaba Paul or people like Paul bigishwaga mu buzima bwa they were taught in their lives kubinyanga mugari to be men of integrity Imamvu imamvu imana yakunze Paul the reason why God loved Paul. Paul. <laughs> Nono hamenye ko aba bantu bari mukuri. Paul amaze kubibona rero aravuga ati niko ngiyewe po ndi umugabo wo guhamya ibinyoma. Ndi yumva gukundu bavuga ngo ari mu kinyoma. Bari bafite amavanere atabemerera kubeshya. Niba rero nimo mvuga ngo Kristo ndi yazutse ni imana ngiye kwigira umunya kinyoma. Ibyo ndi bishoboka. Turabagabo badahamya ibinyoma. Nibyo yabwiraga abantu munyemere mwa bakorinto turabagabo bakuze twigishwa kuri twigishwa amavalere indanga gaciro ntabwo turaba no ndi turaba tetse ibimitwe baza kubeshya turabagabo bukuri ni ni mwemere kuko imana nibitarazuye Kristo ko turayibeshera hero ndi turabagabo bo kubeshera imana ni ibya now in the times of Paul Paul was a man among many who were men of values what they believed in they were ready to die for it they were even ready to kill for it Paul persecuted the church not because he was a wicked man at heart but he persecuted the church because he believed in the truths of God to him the people were misleading others by telling them that Jesus came died for them and rose for them so God looks at the scenario and says I need to reveal myself to this man because he's killing people people in my name. So Paul says Corinthians, believe me, I'm a man of values, I'm a man of truth. If I'm telling you that I have seen him, that he is risen, then surely he is risen because these were men of values. These were men who never lied. Kumurongo 16 ngo niba bafuye batazuka na Kristo ndarakazuka. Ibi Paul abisubiyemo kandi kugira ngo abereke ko ibyo bababwiye ari ibinyoma. Verse 16 he says for if the dead do not rise then Christ is not risen he repeats it again to show them that it's the truth ara komeza bishimangira niba rero Kristo atarazutse kwizera kwanyu tikugira umumaro ahubwo muracari mu byaha byanyu then he emphasizes this on verse 17 and says if Christ is not risen then your faith is futile and you're still in your sins no neho muracara abanyabza you still sinners mwe kwirwa muri rimba ngo yadukuye wibza muraririmba ibiki nibatarazutse why do you think that he has redeemed you from sin if you do not believe that he rose kuki mukori gaburo ryera why do you partake of the table of the lord nibigaragaza ko yazutse because that shows you rose stop all of those things ara komeje ku murongo wa 10 no munana kandi niba bimeze bityo nabasinziriye muri kristo bararimbutse Mm -hmm. And then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If this is the case, because we then if you don't believe in the resurrection of Christ even your sins have not been washed even those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished there is no life after this verse 19 if in this life only we have hope in Christ we are of all men the most pitiable Niba Kristo tarazutse. If Christ never rose. Akaba ari we twizeye ngo ni muzima yarazutse. And our hope is in him that he rose. Kandi tarazutse. And he didn't rise. Turabo kugirirwa impu. We are pitiable. Turi inyuma yabandi bose turabo. We're behind everyone, even the fools. 20. Ngo ariko noneho. 
Kristo yarazutse. Amen. Niwe muganuro wabasinziriye. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 20 but now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Kristo yarazutse. Christ is risen. Niwe muganura wabasinziriye bivuga iki? Kwazutse niwe wa mbere. Donc niwe mbuto ya mbere yazutse. Nuko uvuga ngo izindi zizaza. Iyo wejeje ubwa mbere wizera ko nubwa kabiri uzeza. Kristo niwe muganura nabandi basinziriye bazazuka. Christ is the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep it means he rose first and everyone else will rise. Kuko ubwo urupfu rwazanwe n'umuntu niko no kuzuka ko bafuye kwazanwe n'umuntu For since by man came death by man also came the resurrection of Ninde the dead Ninde muntu wazanye Who brought death Adamu Adam Urupfu rwazanwe n'umuntu na Adam Death came by man Adam Kuzuka nako kuzanwe n'umuntu witwa nde Yesu Kristo Resurrection came by man called Jesus Christ. Niyo mpamvu Yesu aza kudukiza urupfu ataje ari maraika, ataje yambaye umwuka. Kuko abayerishe formule yo kudukiza. Hagombaga nanone ko dukizwa nundi muntu kuko twishwe n'umuntu bituma imana yihindura umuntu. It required a man to come and give us life just like man had taken life. Man had brought death. If Christ hadn't had come as an angel, it wouldn't have worked. It would have gone against the law. So he had to become man for this to take place. Kuko bose bakojwe gupfa na Adamu, niko bose bazahindurwa bazima na Kristo. Amen. Amen. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Kuko Adamu, ariwo wazanyurufu, ninako Kristo nawe yazanyubugiyo. Because Adam brought death, Christ brought life. Unvako bibiri yivuga ha. Ngwariko, umunuwe se munganya we, kuko Kristo ariwe muganura, maze hanyuma, awa Kristo wakazabo na kuzuka, ubgazaza. But each one in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward those who are in Christ at his coming. Let me rush through resurrection. Christ is the first fruit. Afterward, it's the Christians. When the trumpet will sound, there will be the angel's voice sounding, and the dead will rise. Those who died in Christ, pagans will not have reason by then. They will remain in their problems, in their pain. Then the dead will join the Christians who are, are transformed. And they will all meet the Lord. They will spend seven years. In seven years, they will be taking on the garment of the bride. And they are and their works will be going through the furnace of fire, those who served the Lord, those who prayed much, those who gave much, Aba and they'll be given a crown. Now pagans who have remained here, with the Jews who are not saved, there'll be the time of the Antichrist. The Antichrist will work for seven years. Now in the operation of the Antichrist, and there will be an angel of God who will come to seal an angel of God who will come to seal the 144,000 Jews that the Antichrist may not take their lives then there will be an angel of God in the heavenly he will have the message of of salvation he will sound his voice and people will hear him Moses and Elijah again they will come back in the flesh they will prophesy for people they will spend 1000 days and the whole world will have one president one language one, one money because of the internet because of technology 
The whole world will be controlled in the computer system. The whole world will be controlled in and the Antichrist will be able to control everyone because they will insert chips in the hands of people and be able to control their coordinates wherever they will be. And right now, the chips are being tested. And yes, they will proclaim the gospel. And Jews will speak the gospel. Many people will be killed if they believe in Jesus. And whoever is against the Antichrist will be killed. They will not be redeemed by the blood of Jesus, but by their own blood. They will find us in heaven. The reason, the reason why we will not die is because we've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. The second chance that Jesus will give is when people give up their lives. They will gulleten you and your blood will redeem you. You will not sing the song of the Lamb and Moses because you are not redeemed by Jesus but by your blood. After seven years, Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem, with Christ and the bride, we will have David before us. Then Christ will come physically on us. He will travel on Mount of Olives. There will be a rift valley on Mount of Olives. And from Jerusalem all the way to Rwanda, Congo, and Burundi, it will be one land. And the mountain will be cut in four. All the saints will come down. And the hospital of the world will be in Jerusalem. Now pagans who will have remained when the time of the Antichrist comes, once we come on earth, the angel Michael will take Satan and bind him and throw him in a pit. And he'll be bound, he'll be bound for a thousand years before he hits the bottom of the pit. That's the millennium we will spend here. And David will be the governor of Jerusalem. And Jesus will be the king of the earth. There will be a difference where Christians live and pagans live. Now that time is called the time of a thousand years. Because there are people here on earth and Jews who try to fight. Satan will come back in a short while. After, before the end of a thousand years, Satan will come back from the peace. And God will give him time to test people. In the camp of Satan, you hear bars. You hear songs of the devil. But the bride of Christ will never be tested again. But the Jews, some will backslide. Now the world will have one army. And they'll go to the plain of Armageddon. It will be the battle of Gog and Magog. It will be led by Meshek, Tubal, and Rosh. Rosh ni Russia, Meshek ni Moscow, Tubal ni Triblir, muri Georgia. Now, muri bila biche, muri Balkan. Hari yani ho imbunda zikome zaru tura zavazi hagas. Now, Rosh is Russia, Meshek is Moscow, and Tubal is Georgia. They'll all gather. And the whole world will have one army. But the battle will be in the plain of Armageddon. Beneath the Armageddon. Pagans who died are not yet risen. Do you understand? Then. 
when they go to shoot the saints because they will all attack Christ and the saints they are fighting destruction now they are preparing weapons of mass destruction weapons such as nuclear bombs because they will be using them and sending them in the camps of the saints we are still in the testing phases today Okay. As I was talking about resurrection Christ will release a word from his mouth do you know what will have happened when we come on earth there will be three spirits in operation which is the trinity of evil Satan, Antichrist and the false prophet the two when we come they will be thrown in a place of furnace Satan will go to the furnace later the day he will connect everyone against the saints that time Christ will release a word once he releases a word the whole world, the whole earth will become fire. The saints will be taken out. Once the saints are taken out, there will come a white throne of God. This white throne will have a book that has the names of all people. Then the dead will rise. Pagans. Everyone will come before the white throne. There will be an angel calling names. There will be a new earth and a new heaven. Kept for the saints. When they call names. If you find yourself in that book. You will enter into the kingdom. Those who will not be in the book of life. They will take themselves to the furnace and they'll find no Satan nyoma, the false prophet and the antichrist there'll be great wailing and gnashing of teeth for eternity then we will know the truth because we will all present ourselves before the white throne you will know that your relatives didn't know Jesus and where they're headed to that will be the last farewell one going to heaven another one going to hell that's the resurrection that Paul was talking about let me go back But each one, verse 23, but each one in his own order, Christ the first fruit, afterward those who are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom of God to the Father. Those who come after are the saints. Are you scared? Eh? Are you scared? Be saved. There is no solution for the fear you have. The only solution you have is to get saved. Because it will happen. Mm -hmm. That's what the 
That's what the Bible says in the book of Matthew that on my right hand will be the lambs and on the left hand will be the goats. You either choose to be a goat or choose to be a lamb. Let's confess that we are lambs. I'll stand on the right of the Father. My name is in the book of life. Maranatha. Maranatha. Come Jesus. A mighty hand clap to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you. I will be there. Now, eh? Will you be there? Now, eh? Will you be Hallelujah. there? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't walk with fear, doubting if you will make it, you what will make it. Redeemed by precious blood. Wima. You are a child what of God. Redeemed by what Jesus. Jesus. Washed your Christ sins. Christ, Christ died and rose. You are a priest. priest. And you are a what priest. And you are a king. You will live there. there. You will live there. Hey. Hallelujah. <laughs> I know I was going to go there that's what the Bible says in saying that each one will rise in their own order and when you read the book of Daniel chapter 12 you find Daniel saying that some will rise from the dead to shame and others will rise from the dead for glory so what do you think you will rise up for? Glory. Amen. 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 This will be a time of great pain and sorrow that have never been. When you read the book of Revelation from the fifth chapter to the 21st chapter of Revelation. Those chapters talk about what will happen when the Antichrist will be in operation on earth. And the 22nd chapter talks about the answer of the groom, of the bride calling for the groom, Maranatha, Christ come. Hallelujah. Okay. 23. Ariko umuntu wese Nimbaraga zos. Kuko akwiri egutegeka. Kugeza aho azashiri yaba nzibe munsi yibire ngebzi. Umanzi uzaheru kagukuru wako yitkwande. Urufu. Oho. Kuko handis kwengo ya muha egutkwara zos. Abishira munsi yibire ngebzi. Ariko ubugo ifugiti. Ahawe egutkwara zos. Bira gara gara yuki mana ya muha egutkwara zos. Itabi but each one in his own order Christ the first fruit afterward those who are Christ at his coming then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death, for he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted. Now when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Everything will be subject Christ to Christ. Then Christ will be subjecting it all to God. 
nubwo ari Though he's God, but he will submit all to God. And he will say, This is what I went to do. These I have redeemed. When I went to earth, do you know what Jesus is doing now? He's praying. The Bible says he intercedes. For us. He's not praying for pagans. He's praying for the saints that they may stand firm in the faith till the day he presents us to the Father. Then he will say, I can now rest. For behold, these I have saved in all the Data. nations. Father, behold, I present them to you. Then we shall live with him for eternity. People of God. All will be subject to the Father. Otherwise, verse 29. Otherwise, what will they do who are baptized for the dead? If the dead do not rise at all, why then are they baptized for the dead? for you to get it I'll take you to verse 32 then I'll go back to verse 29 Otherwise you're going to be baptized for the dead and why do we stand in jeopardy every hour I affirm by the boasting in you which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord I die daily if in the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus what advantage is it to me if the dead do not rise let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die this is what Paul is saying on verse 29 let's go to Romans 6 3 to 5 because scriptures explain scriptures Romans 6 verse 3 to 5 should people be baptized unto those who died what is Paul saying or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father even so we also should walk in newness of life for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection Matthew 20 Matthew 20 Verse, verse 22 to verse 23 Matthew 20 verse 22 and 23 maze nyina wabeneze bedayo azana abana be bombi aramupfukamira ngo agirica musaba na baramusubiza ati urashaka iki aramusubiza ati tegeka kwa abana banje bombi bazicarana mu bwami bwawe umwe iburyo bwawe undi bumoso ibaze twese tuzajya mu ijuru ariko uyu mugore yari yamusabye ngo Yohana <laughs> na Yesu na Yakobo nao Petero Petero na Andrea baravukanaga 
abo nabo barabavandimwe e bari barafashije rero umusore witwa Natanael uko si Natanael eh yafuye ke naba Filipo bariya none baramuadopta yakwijwe na 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 Yona Yona ni se wa Petero Simon Simon mwene nde mwene Yona donc bariya famille yo kwa Petero na famille yo kwa Zebedayo kuko se wa Petero navuze byinshi then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to him with her sons kneeling down and asking something from him and said to her what do you wish she said to him grant that these two sons of mine may sit one on your right hand and one on the left in your kingdom now the sons of Zebedee were James and John and the mother was a cousin to Mary the mother of Jesus so most of the disciples were related such as Peter was the brother of Andrew and they had adopted Nathaniel in their household and their father was Jonah yes oh. mm -hmm. Jonah Jonah the father of Peter Andrea Jonah the father of Peter and Andrew died early Peter ni warumana wimfura Peter was the first born and he was followed by Andrew Dero Zebedayo Zebedee se wande wa Yakobo na Yohana Zebedee the father of James and John afata Petero took Peter na na, na Andrea and Andrew abagira bana be and adopted them no no bakoreraga muri cooperative imwe yubwo yuburobyi there were fishermen who worked in a cooperative abo kwari kwari bane the four Zebedee was alive. And he raised Peter and Andrew. Na Andrea. And Andrew. So he trained them as fishermen. And then because they grew in Zebedee's house they felt like they were related to Jesus they were four and they grew up under a same family it was a family Judah Judah when he arrived with Mary and Jesus he arrived with Joseph he arrived with family of Joseph he arrived with cousin of Jesus Judas, Judas Iscariot was not on the side of Mary but was a cousin through Joseph only Judas only Judas was related to Jesus through the house of Judas actually Jesus trusted Judas more than Peter he trusted him and he trusted him with the finances of the ministry now you, you get the picture hmm Twari tukiri kuri Zebene Zebeda Abwira Yesu bati umva Yesu rero. So the woman comes and says Jesus. Yakoba azicara iburyo na na Yohana ibumoso cyangwa se bimwe bimorose na hane. Nitugera mu bwami bwawe uyu mwanya ngufashe akirikare. Reserve. I'm reserving the right and the left side of your throne once we get to heaven my sons will occupy both seats. I'm reserving in your kingdom. Listen to what Jesus said. Timuzi icho musaba. Yesu na wari filosofu wajwe. Aramu mga ya tumvarero mubzei. Timuzi icho musaba. Mga basha kunywe la kukikome za nguwe la ho. Bati turabibasha. Aramu mga ya toke. Nukuri igikome chanji. Mza kinywe la ho. Ariko kuichari uriyo buganjini umosu. Sinjubi gaba keretsabo data yabitunganyirije yes jesus answered philosophically he says you do not know what you ask are you able to drink the cup that i'm about to drink and be baptized with the baptism that i'm baptized with ako ako iyo version yo nashaka then he say they say to him we're able so he said to them, you will... Can we repeat the baptism yes. there? Yes. So, so we don't... Yes. Are you able to drink the cup that I'm about to drink and be baptized? You read and I interpret yes. now. Yes. Are you able to drink the cup that I'm about to drink? And be baptized? 
hanyuma mukazabatizwa with the baptism umubatizo that i am baptized ngiye kubatirizwaho murumva matizo you understand the baptism mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they say to him were able so he said to them so he said to them you will indeed drink my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with but to ah. sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give but it is for those for whom it is prepared by my father let's go to mark 10 37 Mark ichumi Mirongo itatu na nakarindwi Mark 10:37 Baramusubiza bati uduhe kuzicara mu gwiza bwawe umwe buryo bwawe undi ibumoso maze Yesu arababwira ati nti muzi cyo musaba mwashobora kunywera kugikome nzanyweraho cyangwa kubatizwa umubatizo zabatizwa habagasubiye mo neza but jesus said verse 37 they say to him grant us that we may sit one on your right hand and the other on your left in your glory but jesus said to them you do not know what you ask are you able to drink the cup that i drink and be baptized with the baptism that i'm baptized with baramusubiza bati turabishobora yesu arabwira ati koko igikombe nzanyweraho muzakinyweraho kandi numubatizo nzabatizwa niwo muzabatizwa ho namwe they say to him we are able so jesus said to them you will indeed drink the cup that i drink and with the baptism i'm baptized with you will be baptized luka 12:50 luka 12:50 luka 12:50 mm -hmm. Ari umubatizo kwiriye kubatizwa Nyamara uburyo mbabazwa kugeza aho uzasohorera But I have a baptism to be baptized with and how distressed I am till it is accomplished Urumva hari umubatizo ngiye kuzabatizwa I'm going to be baptized Ijambo Paul yavuga kubatirizwa abapfuye ni so what did Paul mean by being baptized unto the dead? This word is explained by these verses. Baptism means death. When they talk about the baptism of death or the dead, is, is to be among the martyrs, those who will die. The baptism of the dead, those who will die for Christ. Accepting to die for Christ. Baptize the baptism of the dead. This means if I die because of Christ, listen to the concept he was saying. It means I will rise. So if there is no resurrection, why should I be baptized the baptism of death? Why should I accept people to kill me because of Christ, yet there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead will not rise, why should I accept the baptism of the dead? Why will I accept to be beheaded because of Christ? That's why Jesus was asking them, Will you be baptized the same baptism that I received? That's what Paul says in verse 30. Uh, 29. Otherwise, what will they do who are baptized for the dead if the dead do not rise at all? If there is no resurrection for the dead, why do people choose to die this death? So those who do not know this scripture, they will 
pray to the people who died and choose to baptize them in their names. No. These died because of Christ. This is the baptism of death. Verse 30 he says And why do we stand in jeopardy every hour If there is no resurrection of the dead Why should I be troubled Or why should I suffer He says I affirm by the boasting in you which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord I die daily, I suffer I travail because I know that Christ died and he rose again if he didn't rise then why do I suffer? Verse 32 if in the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus what advantage is it to me if the dead do not rise let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die let's go to 2 Corinthians 1 verse 8 8 to 10 2 Corinthians 1 8. Verse 8 Amen. For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure above strength, so that we despaired even of life. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and does deliver us, in whom we trust that he will still deliver us. This is what Paul is talking about when he mentions Ephesus. He despaired even for life. But God delivered him. We had troubles. Where we could have lost our hope. But we, but we trusted in the Lord because we had hope. They had hope of the resurrection. When you go to Acts 14, 19, you find that Paul had been stoned and thrown outside the city wall. And then when you read Acts 14, 19 you find that they had stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city and left him to be dead but he says why do we keep teaching why do we put ourselves in jeopardy why do we go through such problems if Christ didn't rise let us leave, eat and drink because tomorrow we die if Christ didn't rise Paul understood one thing. He, he understood that in Corinth, people had chosen to value what their friends had told them instead of what the pastor or what he had preached to them. That's why verse 33 he says Do not be deceived Evil company corrupts good habits Because you kept company with those evil people Who said those bad words You were defiled yourself 
kuko bibakwiriye ntimukongere gukora ibyaha kuko bamwe batamenye imana ibyo mbibabwiriye kubakoza isoni hari abantu muri eglise y'ikorinto batubeshya ngo bamenye imana ngo ariko ntibayimenye ati mumbabarire ko wamvuze niyo nuko gira ngo mbakoza isoni mumenye ko twabanye n'abatwihishemo batigeze bamenye imana ibyo Paul says awake to righteousness and do not sin for some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. He was saying, we have lived with some people in the church in Corinth who hid among us and gave us the impression that they had known God, but they didn't. And I'm saying this to their shame. Let me read these verses and we conclude. Icyo biba tikiba kizima kitabanje gupfa kandi icyo biba tikiba gifite umubiri kizagira hanyuma ahubwo ubiba kabutu bwako kienda kabishaka cyangwa akandi kabutu ariko imana igaha umubiri kuko yakawugeneye kandi akabuto kose igaha umubiri wawo ukwako urumva avuga imbuto imbuti yishize hariya mu butaka zirafa zikamera ni gutu umuntu wajya mu butaka ntave mu wundi bati wa mupfu igira kumbuto arakomeza avuga ngo wa mupfu igira kunyama 139 inyama zose sizimwe ahubwo izabantu ziri ukwazo izinyamaswa ziri ukwazo izibisiga ziri ukwazo izifi ziri ukwazo kandi hari w'imibiri yo mwijuru n'imibiri yo mwisi ariko ubwiza bw'iyo mwijuru buri ukwabo nubwo mwisi nabwo buri ukwabo ubwiza bw'izuba buri ukwabo ubwiza bw'ukwezi buri ukwabo ubwiza bw'inyenyeri buri ukwabo kuko inyenyeri imwe itanganya ubwiza n'indi nyenyeri no kuzuka kwa bapfuye niko kuri umubiri ubibwa ubibwa ari wo kubora ukazazurwa ari wo kutazabora ubibwa ufite igisuzuguriro ukazazurwa ufite ubwiza ubibwa utagira intege eh, intege ukazazurwa ufite imbaraga ubibwa ari umubiri wakavukira ukazazurwa ari umubiri w'umwuka niba hariho umubiri wakavukire hariho n'umwuka uko niko byanditswe ngo umuntu wa mbere ari we Adamu yabaye ubugingo buzima naho Adamu wa nyuma yabaye umwuka utanga ubugingo ariko umwuka si ubanza ahubwo umubiri ni ubanza hagaheruka umwuka umuntu wa mbere yaturutse mu butaka ari ubutaka naho umuntu wa kabiri yaturutse mu ijuru kuko ubutaka ariko niko nabo butaka bandi bari kandi nguko uwijuru ari niko nabijuru bandi bari kandi nkuko twamba ishusho y'ubutaka niko tuzambara n'ishusho y'ubijo nuko bene data icyo mvuga niki yuko abafite umubiri na maraso bisa batabasha kuragwa ubwame bw'Imana kandi ibibora bitabasha kuragwa ibitabora dore mba menere ibanga ti tuzasinzira twese ahubwo twese tuzahindurwa mukanya gato ndetse mukanya ngako guhumza ubwo impanda y'imperuka izavuga impanda izavuga koko abapfuye bazurwe ubutazongera kubora natwe duhindurwa kuko uyu mubiri ubora ukwiriye kuzambikwa kutabora kandi uyu mubiri upfa ukwiriye kuzambikwa kudapfa ariko uyu ubora numara kwambikwa kutabora nuyu upfa ukambikwa kudapfa nibwo hazasohora rya jambo ryanditswe ngo urupfu rumizwe no kunesha warupfuwe kunesha kwawe kurihe warupfuwe urubohirwa we ruri hehe ibyaha nibyo rubohirwa urupfu kandi imbaraga zibyaha na mategeko ari ku imana ishimwe iduha kunesha ko bw'umwami wacu Yesu Kristo nuko bene data bakundwa mukomere mutanyeganyega murusha witeka gukora imirimo y'umwami kuko muzi yuko umuhati wanyu atari ubusa ku mwami amen bavandimwe brethren murumva ko tuzazuka we will all rise niba kabuto wateka zuka if you can sow a seed and it rises up now uzazuka you will rise uyu mubiri ni wa adam this body is for adam ubugingo buturimo nubwa yesu but the spirit the life we have is from jesus logic irumvikana it's logical iyo umuntu apfuye when you die kimwe kirekera micyacu one claims the other igitaka kiravuga ngo mana ngarurira ikibiri cyanjye the earth will claim for the body umuntu w'imbere urimo ijuru naryo bati ngarurira ibyanjye and the heavens will call for the spirit urumva rero hari umubiri w'ijuru hari uwise 
There is a body of the earth and a body of the heaven. And the death will be defeated at last. We will trample over him and say, where is your sting? We will laugh at death. And we have already begun laughing at it. Because when we die, we do not die. The inner man carries on before God. Brethren, beloved, be strong and do not be shaken. Abound in the works of the Lord. Knowing that your labor is not in vain. That God will bless you. May God bless you. Thank you very much. Father God, we thank you in this moment. Thank you for the resurrection. Thank you for blessing us. Bless everyone here. And help us. And bless us. Let us go with you. And tomorrow in the open night. Let us be in your power. We thank you in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Go with Jesus. May God bless you. you. Thank you. No mami, yara suze muva fu.